A woman can row at four metres per second in still water. She rows across a river 80 metres wide. The river flows at a constant speed of 3.5 metres per second. So, as in the previous video, we let R be the name of a pint that's moving in the river. And let's suppose that the river is moving to the right. So a pint in the river will be moving with a speed of 3.5 metres per second. We imagine a set of axes centred at R. So these are moving axes when we are considering the velocity of the boat as seen from the river. Well, as seen from this pint R moving in the river. Same thing. She wishes to land between pints B and C. B is a pint directly across from the starting point A and C is 20 root 3 meters downstream from point B. If theta is the direction she takes, find the range of values of theta if she lands between B and C. So she wants to land anywhere between B and C along this colored line here. Now if you're new to this kind of problem, I'd recommend that you look at the video previous to this video where I discuss um, the motion of a boat on a river in great detail. In the previous video I explain how to get the angle of entry to the river in order for a boat to go directly across a river and that's part of this problem. The other part of this problem is to find the angle of entry to the river so that the boat goes from point A to point C, but that's a very similar type of problem. So really, it's worth um, looking at the previous video. And uh, this problem is really just the same problem with a little bit extra. Okay, as you saw in the previous video, um, we referred to the velocity of the river as VR. Actually, we refer to a point moving in the river. Um, now, we refer the velocity of r to fixed axes on the shore. Okay, we could call this point s, s for shore as we did in the previous video and then vrs would be the velocity of the river relative to the shore. But since the shore is fixed, it's part of the fixed background, we just um, call vr the absolute velocity of the river. Now I explained in the last video that when we are told that a boat can go at a certain speed in still water. It means that the speed of the boat relative to the river or the water is four. Okay, so th that's the speed the boat is doing in still water or relative to a point moving in the water, in the river. So relative to point R, the speed of the boat is four meters per second. So this value here for still water is the relative speed of the boat. Now what we really want is the relative velocity of the boat, VBR with the arrow, because if we know that, we know the angle of entry that the boat must go in in order to reach points between B and C. Now what about the velocity of the boat as seen from the shore? I could write VBS, but we just write VB. This is the absolute velocity of the boat. Well, first of all, let's suppose that the boat is going from A to point B. Well, as we saw in the previous video, the velocity of the boat is a vector pointing entirely in the positive J direction. Now we don't know the magnitude of VB. Okay, We know the magnitude of VBR, the speed of the boat relative to the river, but we don't know um, the speed of the boat relative to the shore, VB, or the absolute speed of the boat. So let that speed be VB. So this is something we did in the previous video. And we do know the direction. The direction is entirely in the positive J axis. Now we can connect uh, the vectors VBR, VB and VR through this relative velocity formula. This is true for um, constant velocities. That's all we're dealing with here. So um, let's do that. S VB minus VR. Well, vector VB is the sp speed of the boat, the absolute speed of the boat times vector plus J minus the velocity of the river. 
and we write the i component first. Now what's missing in vector vbr is the j component. So we use the fact that the magnitude of vector vbr is 4 as we've seen and we just solve this equation. Solving this equation we get vb equals 1.936 meters per second. So now we can write down vector vbr. Now let's consider the view from r. Remember r is a point in the river moving to the right. Now we're viewing everything from r so r appears to be fixed. Um, the velocity of the boat will not be directly across the river now. It won't appear to be directly across. It'll appear to be going at some angle theta to the shore. You see that VBR has an I component. The magnitude of the I component is 3.5. The magnitude of the J component is 1.936. So using this information we can find this angle theta. Solving this we get 28.95 degrees. So even though she wants to row the boat directly from point A to point B across the river, as seen from a point R moving in the river, she appears to be moving in the direction of vector VBR, that is at an angle of 28.95 degrees to the shore, well this time measured uh, clockwise from the shore. So I explained in detail in the previous video that she has to enter the river at this angle theta if she wants to row the boat directly across the river. Next we need to find the angle that she needs to enter the river at in order to go from point A to point C and this is a very similar problem. Of course VB is no longer VB times vector J. It's no longer a vector pointing entirely in the J direction. The only thing we know about vector VB so far is its direction. We get its direction from the fact that we have a right angle triangle with sides 20 root 3 and 80. This angle alpha is fully specified. We have the side opposite alpha is 80, the side adjacent alpha is 20 root 3. And the angle down here is also alpha. Okay, these two angles form a pair of z angles because this line is parallel to this line. We're dealing with a river, of course, with parallel um, sh shores. The magnitude of the j component of vector vb is the magnitude of vector vb, which we'll call vb without the arrow, which we don't know, times the sine of alpha. And the magnitude of the i component is the magnitude of VB, which is VB without the arrow, times the cos of alpha. And we can find sine alpha and cos alpha. Sine alpha is the side opposite alpha, which is 80, divided by the hypotenuse. Um, we have to work out the hypotenuse. I had the wrong value in there. But it's easy to get the hypotenuse. We just use Pythagoras' theorem on this right angle triangle. Okay. To four decimal places, this is 0.9177. The cos of alpha is got by getting the side adjacent to alpha, which is 20 root 3, divided by the hypotenuse, which we calculated earlier. To four decimal places, that's 0.3974. So we put all that together. The i component is VB cos alpha, that's 0.3974 VB, and uh, the j component is also positive, as you can see. So it's plus 0.9177 VB. So now let's get vector VBR, and to do that we will use the fact that the magnitude of vector VBR is 4. So we have to take vector VB and subtract vector VR. So that means we have to take the I component of VB and subtract the I component of VR. So this is what we get. Then we take the J component of vector VB and subtract the J component of VR. Well, the J component of VR is 0, so we just get 0.9177 VB for the J component of VBR. Now, if we want to find vector VBR, we have to go and get vector, or, sorry, the speed VB of the boat, the absolute speed of the boat. Um, and unfortunately, in this situation, it's a lot more complicated. 
but the method is exactly the same as before. It's just that this vector is a lot more complicated than in the situation where she wanted to row directly across the river. Okay, the magnitude of VBR is given by this horrible expression here. We square the component, sum them and take the square root by Pythagoras and set it equal to 4. Okay, so that's what we did before. It's just that um, solving this for VB is a nightmare. Of course we square both sides to get rid of the square root, but then we'd have to expand this out. Um, we'd end up getting a quadratic equation in VB. We solve that for VB and once we found that we can write down what VBR is. That's if we want VBR, but we don't actually need to get vector VBR to find this angle T. A quicker way to find this angle theta between VBR and the shoreline, this angle here, is to show the three vectors VBR, VB and VR. So um, VBR is just the same as vector VB minus vector VR. That's a vector joining the heads of vectors VR and VB and the head of VBR is at the head of vector VB. And that's easy to see if you just work out this as VB minus VR. If you add VR onto VB minus VR, the VRs cancel and we get VB. So if you add VR onto VBR by the triangle law, you get vector VB. Anyway, the directions of these three vectors are pretty evident from the problem. We have the magnitudes of two of the vectors. We also have this angle, alpha, between VB and the horizontal. Well, vector VR is pointing in the horizontal direction. So we have this angle, alpha. We were working with it up here. There's alpha. We have the sine of it and the cos of it. We can use the sine rule to get this angle beta. So 4 over sine alpha is equal to 3.5 over sine beta. We rearrange to get sine beta. Sine beta is uh, 3.5 sine alpha divided by 4. As we saw before, the sine of alpha is 0.9177. So now we can get angle beta, and once we know angle beta, we have angle theta, the answer to the problem. So that's much easier than trying to solve this equation for VB, and then once having found VB, plugging back up in here for VBR to get angle, and from the knowledge of the vector, the components of the vector, finding angle theta. So calculate beta, 53.42 degrees, uh, calculate alpha, well, we know the sine of alpha is 0.9177, so get the inverse sine of 0.9177. Add beta onto alpha and take the result from 180 degrees. You will get an answer very close to 60 degrees. We could have actually done the previous part using this construction, but the previous part is fairly straightforward to do it the other way. Uh, it's just here, you know, it's much easier to use the three vectors and do some trigonometry on this triangle. So if she wants to row to point C, which is um, some distance downstream on the opposite shore, she needs to enter the water at an angle of 60 degrees to the shore. So if she wants to land at points between B and C, angle theta has to range um, from, well, the previous value that we worked out. I'm after wiping it here, but the previous value was 28.95 degrees to 60 degrees. So these are the values that theta must have if she wants to get to points between B and C on the opposite shore.